Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at this problem. Um, at the instant shown, wheel A is rotating with an angular velocity of 6 radians per second, an angular acceleration of 3 radians per second squared. Uh, first, calculate the angular velocity of bar BC. Uh, and, and so I, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to require you to use either one. You could use the relative velocity method. That would be a perfectly fine method. Or you can use the instantaneous center. I'm about to use the instantaneous center uh, to find that angular velocity. Uh, then I'm going to take that uh, velocity and use it uh, to, to find the angular acceleration. So first, let's calculate the angular velocity. Uh, I'm going to use the instantaneous center of zero velocity method. So, what would that look like? Well, I know that C has to be going this direction. I know that B has to be going this direction. Not, not due to that bar, but due to the wheel, right? Tangent to the wheel. <clears throat> so if I draw my dotted lines, then I would be, I would have an instantaneous center. Okay, way, way up here, okay, which is fine. Make sure we get that uh, direction correct. Uh, and so let's let's calculate RB and RC. And this is just a 90. Let me think about this. If this is 30 and this is 90, this is 60, that is 30. Uh, so <clears throat> it's just a right triangle, a 90 degree triangle. So I can just do sine or cosine or tangent as opposed to having to use uh, the law of sines or the law of cosines. Uh, <clears throat> so I can just use sines. So I'm, I'm going to kind of focus on that 60 degree angle and say if I know this adjacent side, then how about tangent of that angle equals opposite over adjacent. So RB is going to be 1.38 Five, six, maybe you could round that a little bit, but, and then how about um, cosine of that angle <coughs> is adjacent over hypotenuse. So here I'd get RC <coughs> is equal to, what I have, 1.6 meters. All right, so <clears throat> using uh, the instantaneous center, that's kind of the first step is identify your instantaneous center and then find those distances, R, B, and R, C, the distance <clears throat> that your points are from its instantaneous center. Okay, and then what do you do? So this is kind of a review for instantaneous centers. So this is a good review. Where would we start? We would start over here at the wheel and what they've given us. And <clears throat> what equation would we use? The only equation we would use is v equals r omega and we'd use it over and over again v equals r omega v equals r omega v equals r omega we would jump from one to the next to the next we would snake our way through that problem remember so <clears throat> i'm going to start and i like to write okay what am i what am i looking at so first i'm going to start looking at wheel a b and i'm just going to use v equals r omega so i can find v b equals 0.2 times its omega 6 uh, so this would be 1.2 meters per second. Now I'm going to jump to the imaginary disk. I'm going to jump to that instantaneous center, uh, which is the um, information for bar BC. It's, it's almost like bar BC is glued on top of this imaginary disk that is rotating way up there at its instantaneous center. And I'm going to use V equals R omega. So I'm still looking at B. So it's the same point, so it can only have one velocity at that point, but now that I'm looking at the, this different disk, this different bar, then this is a different r and different omega than what I'd use when I was looking at wheel a, b. <clears throat> so this would be still 1.2 equals, but now it's r 1.3856 times its omega for b, c. So I would get the omega for bar b, c is 0.866. Uh, radian, this is angular, so radians per second. Okay, and it, it asks for that, so let me find that. Um, is that um, clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, this did not tell me. Those, those didn't have any positives or negatives. Those equations are just giving me the magnitude of velocity. 
equals the magnitude of r times the magnitude of omega. That was just a magnitude. <clears throat> i got to visualize it myself. How do I visualize it? Well, I start with this. It, it was going 6 clockwise. So if I'm up here at point B, point B would have to be going to the right. So now that I'm, I'm thinking about my disk spinning about here, and I know point B is going to the right, then this would be uh, counterclockwise. So this would be counterclockwise right there. So uh, whether your, your answer is not going to come out negative. Um, <clears throat> you're going to have to visualize whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise yourself. All right, now, uh, if I was, if this was a real instantaneous center problem, I would probably keep going VC equals R omega, RC omega to find VC. Uh, it didn't ask for it, uh, and this is really all, all I was after, um, that the angular velocity for our VC is 0.866. And I need that for my, the second half of my problem, the acceleration part of my problem. And hey, try this one. See if you can use the relative velocity method, and hopefully you'd still get 0.866. All right, now I'm ready for acceleration. Now I'm ready for acceleration. And so um, bar BC is my main bar. That's the bar that's it's not in pure rotation, not in pure translation. That's the bar that I need to use my relative acceleration method for bar BC. No need to use it for, for wheel AB. Technically, it would work. It'd be overkill. You'd get the same answer. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm going to use um, relative acceleration for bar BC. I like to start on the left with the point that I know the least about. So I would say AC equals AB plus AC with respect to B and immediately rewrite this as alpha cross R minus omega squared times R C slash B C B. C slash B, C, B. All right, there we go. And so that, I needed that 0.866. I'm going to plug it in right there. Okay. Now, let me. what do I know about these two points? What do I know about point B and point C? Let's start with point C. Hey, it's in a slot. If you see a slot, you're going to thank, thank me for giving you a problem like that, right? It's slot. It's just linear. Linear, I know it is at a 30 degree angle up here. You know, it, it, it might be up, uh, it might be down, uh, but I know it's at 30 degrees. So let me, I'm going to guess that it is going up that incline at 30 degrees, up that slot right there. But point B, ah, point B. So you see it's in a normal tangential. Why? Because it, it's, it's on this wheel. It's on this wheel. And that wheel is constraining point B. That wheel is telling you, hey, point B is in a normal tangential path. So don't forget about AB normal and AB tangential. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pause that acceleration part of my problem and say, <clears throat> what is AB normal? What is AB tangential? Well, AB normal is R omega squared. And, and I'm going to take, take this side note and and look only at wheel AB, not at my main BC problem, my BC bar, but at wheel AB. <clears throat> so this would be, um, its R is 0.2 and its omega squared, 6 squared. So this is 7.2. Uh, but what direction? What direction? What direction would the normal acceleration be for point B? What direction would the normal acceleration be? Normal is always into the curve. Into the curve. Do you see the curve? Do you see the path into the curve? <clears throat> so in the negative J, right? The normal acceleration for point B, negative 7.2 in the direction, in the negative J uh, direction. All right, AB tangential, R alpha. So 0.2 times its alpha of 3 uh, that we were told. So 0.6, <clears throat> but what direction would the tangential acceleration for point B? <clears throat> well, if this alpha is going clockwise, then the tangential would be right here, A tangential. <clears throat> because we're on the very top of that, so it has nothing to do with this bar. It has everything to do with that wheel and location on the wheel. Uh, it is just in the I direction, positive I direction. And that's what I'm going to plug in right there. So now I think I'm ready for my big uh, long equation. All right, AC. 
I don't know it, but I know it is at this 30 degree angle, cosine 30 I sine 30 J. Uh, a, B, 0.6 in the I minus 7.2 in the J, <clears throat> plus alpha in the K crossed with R from B to C, from B to C, from B to C, okay, okay, not bad, from B to C, 0.8 in the I. All right, and then minus omega squared, 0.866 squared, remember that, that's the omega of bar BC, the 0.866, not the six from the wheel, AB, uh, times 0 0.8, 0 0.8 in the I. All right, and then take a step back and look, two unknowns in that one equation. That is fine because we really have two equations, <clears throat> our I equation and our J equation. So our I equation, what's in front of the I? AC cosine 30 uh, point 0.6. Uh, let's see, is that going to be in the I? No, because it's a cross product, so it's going to cross into the other is that going to be in the I? Yes, it was in the I. It's just multiplication, so it's going to stay in the I. 0.866 squared <coughs> times uh, 0.8. And so that number is actually um, 0.6. Uh, and so AC is 0. Okay, I mean, that, that was the math told me. <coughs> I don't know if I could have realized that. Maybe this is... Um, Probably because this is a special case, um, you know, maybe it's at, since it's at the very top and also 30 degree angles, 60 degree angles, one half, and maybe the length here, the length here. I don't know. We, we could go back and look at why that, at the sense of the acceleration is zero. Um, and anyway, it, it just is. Um, so it, it's not that the velocity is zero. This is going to go up a little bit further uh, before it turns around and has a velocity of zero at its farthest point, um, but, <clears throat> you know, the acceleration is zero at this instant, and just at this instant, um, and then a C sine 30, my J equation, AC sine 30, <clears throat> minus 7.2, all right, and that is going to be the point eight alpha CB <clears throat> is going to be K cross I is positive J, all right, plug in zero, and get alpha CB is 9.0 radians per second squared. It came out positive, and positive means I guessed correctly, and I guessed positive K. Positive K is counterclockwise. All right, so let's take a step back and look at this, overview it. Uh, I did instantaneous center in order to find the angular velocity. Uh, because I needed that. If I didn't do that, I'd have too many unknowns in my acceleration problem. And so for my acceleration problem, I, I, I wanted to start right here with my main equation, my main bar, my relative velocity for bar BC. AC equals AB plus AC slash B. And we rewrite, rewrite that as alpha cross R minus omega squared times R. Uh, but then I noted, I kind of noticed that, hey, point B is in a circular path. So before I get to that problem, let me just look at the wheel and let me find as much as I can about the acceleration of point B. In this case, I could find it all. I could find it completely. The acceleration of point B has a normal acceleration of 7.2 in the negative J and a tangential acceleration of positive or of 0.6 in the positive I. All right, then after I took, kind of took that side note, then I could come back to my main equation, write everything out, plug everything in, uh, do the math, box in my final answers. Not too bad, not too bad.